All right, so today Lee and I are going to be doing a project that probably a lot of you have wondered about. We've got a first gen Camaro here and like a lot of the guys, he's really into the carbon fiber body panels and the interesting thing with first gen Camaros is that you can buy a cowl panel, you can buy a header panel, you can buy a hood, you can buy a trunk lid, but the upper rear deck panel you can't buy. And it's kind of a big deal to cut it out and make one that's fiber or fiberglass or carbon and then bond it in. But what you can do is laminate that part with carbon fiber so that you get that kind of full look of carbon fiber through the whole area. Because the goal on this car is going to be eventually that it's going to have stripes that are carbon fiber and we don't want faux carbon fiber or anything weird on the upper rear deck panel. So what we're gonna show you today is how do you get a carbon fiber upper rear deck panel, or for that matter, any metal panel to laminate with carbon fiber. So step one is you're gonna to need to make a pattern and cut out the carbon fiber. If you look, Lee's already done that, and the edges of the carbon fiber don't have a lot of fraying. There's a trick to getting it where the edges are nice and clean. Typically, when you cut carbon fiber, those edges try to fray out. The toe of the carbon is strings, and once those strings aren't held together, they'll start fraying out. And that fraying will start ruining the middle of the carbon fiber piece, and it'll look like crap. So, on pieces like this that don't have a lot of contour, you can use a trick that is, to put surfacing veil on the back of the carbon fiber. So what we've done is we laid out the carbon on our cutting table, layered, got it all positioned exactly the way we wanted, and then lightly glued some surfacing veil on it. That surfacing veil holds all that fraying from occurring, and it allows you to cut it real nice and clean, and then manipulate the part and have the part stay nice without a bunch of frayed edges, and all the toe trying to get all crazy where the weave doesn't look right. So if you're doing a part that you don't have a lot of contouring on, we always like to do surfacing veil on the back just to hold everything real nice and clean. So here are some of the components that we're gonna be using today. We've got our West Systems resin and hardener. We've got some acetone for cleaning, some tape to try to keep the mess to a minimum, but we usually find a way to make it messy anyway. We've got some black pigment we use that in the first layer of resin just so that you can't see through the carbon. The carbon we're using is 3K. It's pretty transparent. Uh, any place in between the toe, you'll be able to see right through it. And you don't want to have like metal or body filler or a primer or whatever else showing through. So if you put that black pigment in there, it'll just make it a nice black background and you'll never notice it. Now we've got a mixing cup so that we can mix it up and we've got some brushes to apply the resin. There's also, yeah, this is the box. We've got some paper towels and more acetone if we make a bigger mess. So anyways, this is the stuff you need. So to start with, we're gonna go ahead and show you the way we prepped the panels. You still rolling? Yeah. All right, so here's all the panels that are prepped, ready for us to laminate the carbon fiber on them. As you can see, the upper rear body panel has had a skin coat of filler and block sanded so that it's nice and straight and flat. We've got the interior panels that we're going to cover our epoxy, and this back panel is sanded. Everything's been sanded down. We typically like to do it with like a 180 to an 80 grit somewhere in there, just depending on the substrate. It will depend on how much we try to sand it. Typically, we'll not do this process over bare metal because you're not gonna get super great adhesion between the epoxy and the bare steel. We like to use either an epoxy primer or an etch primer underneath there so that we could get a really good bond between the carbon and the metal. Because one of the things that you have to remember, the carbon and the metal will expand and contract at different rates. So you've got to be kind of careful and cognizant of the fact that these things are different materials. They do have different thermal characteristics 
they are going to act differently. So we try to keep the material as thin as we can to avoid any more problems than we need. All right, so Lee is mixing up the resin. The West Systems is kind of cool, makes it handy for small mixes where it's just one pump of the resin to one pump of the hardener. Kind of takes the guesswork out of it, but Lee does have to keep track of how many pumps he's got in there, so I shouldn't start shouting random numbers because that would be rude. So he's putting the black dye in it now. The black dye is up to 3%, so don't want to get crazy with this because it can kind of affect the integrity of the resin. So putting a little bit of the dye in there, mixing it up, and then we'll get a coat on the car. All right, so now Lee and I are brushing on a nice thick coat of resin across the whole panel. We want to get this thick and even because this is going to be the coat that's going to bond the carbon. So anywhere we aren't going to want the carbon to be, we're not wanting to put resin there. and then also you can start to see the resin coming up through. We want to be careful that we don't get too much of this black resin up through here. A little bit would be fine. And then we want to make sure we get it pushed down in this edge really nicely. And then the trickiest part of this whole thing is to fight the urge to keep trying to fiddle with it and put resin on the top. When we're doing laminating, we always like to stop at this point and let that bottom layer cure. And the reason that we do that is because if you keep piling resin on the top, trying to slick out the top surface because everybody gets excited and wants to see the top surface look like a carbon fiber part. What happens is that resin goes through, gets underneath the carbon and floats it off and you'll get all these weird looking bubble spots and everything. So you have to fight that urge. That's how I this. <laughs> you have to smooth it down and then let that lower layer cure. Then once that lower layer is cured and the carbon's held dead flat, then we can brush the finishing coats on, which we'll show you in a little bit. All right, so step one is done. We've got all of the carbon attached with the epoxy, and that first coat of epoxy has dried. So now we're mixing up some more epoxy to start layering coats on top. The first coat, it's really important that we work it in really good and saturate the carbon fully. So we'll brush it on and then we'll work it a little bit with some squeegees and make sure we work the resin down into the fibers really well. All right, so we got one coat of resin on. We're gonna let that dry up a little bit until it gets tacky. And then we'll lay another coat or two after that let them dry and sand it. All right, so we let the resin cure overnight, trim the edges, and now it's time to start block sanding it down flat so that we can put some gel coat on it. So Lee and I will block sand away and let you know what it looks like once it's ready to gel coat. Mainly what we're gonna be looking for is a nice even surface that's gonna be all chalky. We're not going to want to see any little pinholes. So as you're sanding it, you can kind of see the texture in it with the little high spots and low spots. So you want to just keep block sanding it until you have it all nice and flat. Use long strokes so that you don't dig any little pits. Sometimes people get tied up trying to work one little tiny area. And if you work one little tiny area, you'll make a, a wave in it. 
And you're going to want the surface to look nice and flat and smooth when this is all done. So nice long strokes, not pushing too hard. And continuing until it's got a nice even choppy finish. All right, so we're about to mix gel coat. We're gonna spray six take coats to fill imperfections in the carpet. At MK to the already one-to-one -one gel coat and Duratec clear coat. We're gonna go in the booth. Grab a mask. So now we're gonna do that same process every 15 minutes, wait 15 minutes between coats until all the pits and imperfections are covered. So here you can see we just got done with the gel coat and put a coat of PVA over the top, rolled it out of the booth. So now it is ready to clean off the PVA and then block sand it down and prep it for final urethane clear coat. But that will happen when the car gets ready for paint. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed our little tutorial on how we laminate metal parts with carbon fiber. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what we're doing and leave us a comment to let us know what you'd like to see in the future.